How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. So in my previous video I showed the shaft, uh, how bad a shape it's in and uh, the job here. And uh, was well, just a quick overview. This is out of a Harrison lathe. Spline section, seven splines. Hole for a pin. Uh, this hole is for a sleeve. This 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 space it's just a spacer the sleeve sits over with a grub screw and a integral gear also machined into the shaft and then another bearing surface and we have we do have this uh, uh, bronze uh, sleeve bearing that goes that goes here uh, yeah this this one went here and then this is. Uh, in the lathe, I think, this end. But anyway, this is what we have to work with. So a few details. Uh, there, there's nothing here that we can really measure on. We can count the teeth. You can see the tooth form. So it's obvious there how many teeth there are. There's 15 teeth. But we don't know, we really don't know anything else <laughs> uh, other than that. Uh, we know how long, uh, the length of the gear, you know, we, we know that we can measure the length. But that means nothing to determine what gear it is. He uh, brought uh, the other gears uh, with him. So, so these gears here go together, I don't... That that end goes against the this gear, and then these ones. I'm not. Uh, this this one they go this way. They go on the spline portion of the shaft. Now you know you look at these gears. Uh, this one's uh, on another shaft with a big spline. The large gear here is the gear that meshes with the worn out one, and that's. Supposedly put this in back. That's the back gear when these two are engaged So we're going to set these aside You look at these gears and They're pretty beat up uh, Along this edge here all worn and rounded and got some burrs and things like that on them uh, almost all the gears are like that even here all of these on the one side here are all all pretty well beat uh, uh, all here this one actually doesn't look too bad in the middle probably didn't get used much ones here here and then and it it's from engagement not letting the lay stop most likely it's a uh, the grinding of the gears that you might hear in your transmission on your car uh, it, it, It's from not stopping the lathe and and, sh and shifting gears Especially this one. How could you let it go that long or how could you be that hard on it? Um, it's not like the gears are broke off They're worn down You know Anyway, uh that's just abuse of machinery. <laughs> uh, we could probably write some laws against that, right? Uh, anyway, uh, this is the big gear here is the gear that engages the shaft. Uh, and we need to figure out what, what cutter we need to use. We know it's 15 teeth. We know how long it is. Uh, but we don't know what outside diameter to turn that to. Uh, we don't know what pressure angle. We don't know any of this information other than we have this gear. And we know it, it engages there. We believe they're, we're going to go on the assumption that they're imperial gears, not a metric module. So that's, that's where I started. I have uh, some gear, gear tooth gauges. Uh, these are Boston gear ones, I think. Yep, Boston gear. 
uh, you know, to figure out maybe what pitch they are. Uh, well, I have 12, it's somewhere between 12 and 16 uh, diametral pitch. What pressure angle, 14 and a half or 20? I don't know. It's not 12 or, four, 12 or 16. So we, we need to do some measurements and we need to do some calculations to figure these things out. The machinery handbook can uh, help you out an awful lot. And, you know, you have to make assumptions to try to get to where you might think you want to go and things like that. So, uh, like I said, it's 98 tooth. We measured the OD at 7.144, 145. Uh, there's a little bit of roughness on the outside here. I did clean up some of that to get a little better measurement. But within a thousandth is going to be something we can figure out. Uh, so going through the machinery's handbook, uh, I found that 14 pitch, 98 tooth gear, uh, would give me a pitch diameter of 7 inches. And it's like 7 inches exactly, actually. And that could be very close to what, that, the, what the 98 tooth gear is. Since it's seven one forty five, and and when you figure out when you calculate the using the uh, addendum for that ninety eight tooth gear fourteen diametral pitch, it calculates out at one point four two nine as an OD. So we're we're within a, a, a you know one. Two two thousandths, so we're, so I'm pretty sure that is the gear. Uh, then I took a gear two caliper, you know, gear two caliper, right? And I set it up for the addendum that is said here. Oh seven, it's it's point uh, zero seven one four, and I measured the thickness, the chordal thickness of the of the tooth. Uh, and then I measured across two tooth and three tooth because uh, there's some formulas you can use to figure out the pressure angle and I came right on the money uh, uh, I came out to be what right on exactly uh, what the chordal thickness ought to be is my measuring came out to 0 0.106 and so I'm, I'm pretty sure I have the right information for the big gear. Now we still don't know what the pressure angle is though. And uh, that was a little bit harder. I did do some research on the internet. Calculating pressure angle is not, I could not find anything about that in the machiner's handbook. But I found some information on the internet about how to calculate the pressure angle. And uh, where's my calculation? So oh, here we go. Anyway, so we know uh, the 15 tooth gear. We know an approximate. I, I did measure a little bit. It's a 1.235 over the OD of the beat up gears, but I think that's only just kind of close. And when you really look at them, they're really beat up. So that diameter is just a kind of a close thing. So uh, when I so I did some uh, calculations on a 14 diametro pitch. Now the diametro pitch has to be the same uh, on mating gears. So we know that the four, the four and you know it's 14 diametro pitch from what we got off of the 98 tooth gear. Uh, we rough found some information about 15 tooth gear and about what the pitch diameter. Uh, uh, should be and that's 1.0714 inches oops I keep hitting things 
and we got all that information out of the machine use handbook and then the outside diameter calculated out it should be 1.214 so that was fairly easy to get from there, from the 98 tooth gear to here. But the pitch diameter is still a question. And finding the information on, like I said, on the internet, I was able to, with the information I already have, uh, knowing the addendum, knowing the number of teeth, knowing the pitch circle diameter, calculate what the... Uh, pressure angle is. Now it's either going to be 14 and a half or 20. Uh, that's my assumption. It's, it's not going to be uh, something different. So the accuracy only has to be close because of the great discrepancy between 14 and a half and 20. So following through the two equations knowing the diametral pitch the OD of the 98th gear, we could come up with what the pitch, the pressure angle is on the 98 tooth gear. And I calculated it out. I came up with 14.75. Plenty close enough to say it's 14 and a half. And that's because of the measurements you have to take across two teeth and three teeth in several places, come up with an average number and so it all depends on how accurately you do that. Now I use my gear tooth veneer to do that because it can reach down in there because you're measuring at the pit at, at the very base of the tooth. And so that's it's kind of a tight spot to get into uh, on small gears. And uh, it's like I said, so I came up with 14.75. So I'm going to say it's 14 and a half pressure angle. So, so we figured out that it's a 14 and a half pressure angle, 15 teeth, 14 diametral pitch, and we know the outside diameter to turn it to 1.214. So we have enough information now to buy a gear cutter and cut and make this into a blank. Measuring the outside where the splines are, boom, that's that's pretty easy to do. Now. 14 diametral pitch is not very standard, and 15 teeth uh, is not very standard uh, for most gear applications. So you can't buy a gear. Uh, it very You'd have to have a gear made to, to try to slip on here, weld in, and all that stuff. So it's just determined a lot easier to make it. The material we're going to use, uh, we're going to use a 4130 pre-hardened, or 4140 pre-hardened, I'm sorry material uh, it's uh, very strong material uh, 120,000 psi tensile strength uh, it's it's uh, uh, quite rigid and it's very tough uh, it should work out just fine uh, for what for this lathe uh, we're not going to harden it or anything like that what else we do we also did a, a hardness test they took, uh, this is a piece of, of the material we're going to use right here. And this, this, just, this usually runs somewhere between 42 and 38 uh, Rockwell C. And so this is a 40 file and it just, Rockwell C 40 uh, hardness testing file. And I scratch it just barely scratch it so it's it, it's uh, right there at 40 maybe a little softer right uh, it's, it doesn't bite terribly bad it just just does scratch it though and this one this is the shaft here and when you do that here I scratch it but I scratch it even uh, harder to scratch it so the file bites even better so this is actually softer by a little bit than this material here. Uh, they're very, very close to, uh, as far as hardness goes. So 
So for the home shop guy, these, I think uh, you, you've seen some of the other guys. I know uh, Stefan uses a set of these, and uh, a couple of the guys have used them. Uh, these are T-S-U-B-O-S-A-N, made in Japan, hardness tester, uh, six-piece set files, 40 to 65. And they work great for in the shop here, doing what I just did. Um, or if you just, you know, you want to know, you know, close to what something is, you know, whether it's harder or softer, uh, or they work great. So that's where we're at on uh, figuring this stuff out. Um, of course, we measured all the dimensions. Dimensions. We stood it up in a V block uh, on the surface plate and measured the all the lengths. We did a baseline measurement, just like I did it when I did the uh, lead screw on my surface grinder. You know, do a baseline measurement. This will keep you more accurate as you build your shaft and cut your shaft. Measuring each individual one. Yes, is one thing, but when you start adding them together, if you're off a thousandths, two thousandths, here and there, this shaft will not come out the right length. So, measuring the total length and then, then measuring each step as you go along, when you, when you go sit down and make a drawing, you go, oh, that doesn't work. Huh? We're too long by five thousandths or ten thousandths, and you can go back and remeasure and and adjust each piece and that's why doing a CAD drawing is so nice and easy to do fix it fix all the problems with I think we were we ended up being 20 thousandths off and we had to, we went through and just made some measurements real quick and remeasured and we figured out where we were off by a little bit or the most and we just adjusted those lengths and we came out to be all, all all within the total length that it needed to be. And we have a couple holes. There's a pin hole there that just uh, just holds the piece on or something. It doesn't. It's not like a. Not, it's pretty non-critical. But this and then this grub screw hole to hold that spacer on. And well, that we won't put in. We're, that will be put in after everything's together to actually accurately locate that where that needs to hold that spacer. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to overlay. We're going to get this, start turning this. Here's the stock. We're going to use an inch and a quarter. Hot formed. Uh, heat treated 4140, so it's pre-hardened. I've already faced and drilled one in, center drilled it. So I'm just going to throw it in here. It's, uh, it's, it's a little longer than it needs to be right now. So I'm going to face it, center drill it, and just leave it a little long. So what I'm noticing there is I'm having a difficult time right there at the center for some reason uh, and not cutting so what you have to do you know my tool post here just so this is kind of interesting my tool post my tool sit very close to the top of the cross slide and I can't let chips build up or anything get underneath there and that's what I happen to have right now so I have some chips right in the crotch on that other side 
and I was holding my tool up. Oh yeah. tip there just to watch out for that. I said I was going to use the drive plate and the center. Well, that 5C center I have, I've never really tried it in here, or uh, not 5C, Morris Tabor number 5. Well, it sticks out about this far from the uh, end of the spindle. Well, heck, the about the, the, if you can see the line here in this, about one inch out from the back of the chuck, that's about how far out the dry plate or the face plate sit and it sticks so far out my, none of my dogs or even this one uh, is fairly long uh, the arm is not even close to being long enough uh, attaching to the stock to reach uh, to engagement uh, your center needs to only stick out maybe an inch from the end of a, of a plate like that a face plate or uh, a dry plate so that center is not going to work uh, I'll have to do something. I, I would love to have a center that fits in as true in there. Uh, but that one's not going to work. Uh, it's more statement number five, they say, on the lathe here for the spindle. Anyway, so I put the truck back on. I put a, my, the center I usually use in here and took a truing cut. I also dial indicated in the lay the chalk uh, again and uh, just to make sure it was running nice and true anyway uh, this is an adjustable chuck uh, and then I did a nice truing cut on there a few thousandths off of that and we mounted our stock with the dog and it engages in the chuck all, basically all the way almost an inch so uh, that will work out just fine and uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a cut and uh, near the ends and I'm going to see what kind of taper I have uh, I can't take off a lot uh, because well let's just say if we use this end uh, there's going to be a gear in here and it's uh, this is an inch and a quarter roughly and we were only uh, 1.21 uh, is the dimension for where that gear is so you know we're only talking like forty thousandths uh... thirty five thousandths i could take off of here now i know there's enough material to do that uh... and we'll get rid of all the scale and roughness in this uh, this is the same material i make the dovetail cutters out of and i turn those the large ones to one point two three zero and there's there's a plenty of uh... material so i can't uh... cut where that gear goes but I can cut, you know, down here a little bit to uh, see see what we're at. Uh, we're dealing with short sections of turning in, you know, just a few inches. The long section where the spline is only uh, about four inches long. Uh, so, you know, if I have a a thousandths taper in the four inches, that that's that's a very very little, uh, well within a tolerance uh, to do so. Uh, we we will we're going to try to get it down to an absolute minimum. What I'll probably do is say I'm going to use this end for the gear and this end for all the other turning, which are quite a bit smaller diameters, and then I can turn 
you know, four or five to six inches worth uh, and gauge my taper a lot better. We'll refer to the drawing here. As you can see here, we have three diameters. Uh, uh, this is one one inch, fifty thousand. So we, we you still have uh, two hundred thousandths even on here. So we can we can turn quite a bit. We could we have all of this. We could actually make a cut on and save that last few inches, the last four and a half inches, for where the, for that is. So we could take a fairly good long cut and 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 see what our taper uh, truly is. So we're going to, in the lathe, we're, we're going to turn it that way. <laughs> and, and we'll take a, a cut to see what our taper is. I came down here five inches. Um, that way I won't affect anything here, and I'll, I'll do my taper testing right here in this five inches. I'm going to turn this at about 876 and about 10,000 feed rate. change tools. This one has a large radius. I'm going to go to a smaller radius tool so I can take a nice light cut and uh, get a consistent result. Well, I'm showing about three and a half, but um, like I said, that, that large radius tool, I need to cut 20, 25 thousandths to, to get a good, uh, the bare minimum uh, to get a good uh, result. Usually it's within a thousandths or less and uh, when you cut that deep because of the radius. This is a, a one radius, uh, what is the sixteenth of an inch. Uh, I'm going to take about fifteen thousandths off. And we're going to some chatter. We're down at 715 RPM, same feed rate, and we're not getting any chatter. And we're getting a nice little breaking chip at about an inch long. Pretty decent finish. It, I mean, it's nice and shiny and smooth. So, let's see what the taper is there. Wow, whopping five thousands. So we just zero it down there and then come down here and see what it is. It tells us to taper right off. So 5.7 bigger down here. So we need to push the tailstock um, smaller here. Uh, so the tailstock is this way too far, cutting more. And so we need to push it that way a little tiny bit. Well, after uh, about three adjustments, I have it down to 7 tenths of a thousandth in 5 inches. So I was letting it cool off a little bit and uh, remeasure this. Yep, still seven tenths. So that'll be happy. That'll be good. Uh, I changed a, a insert that is more of a uh, positive rake on it, uh, and it, it 
much much easier to take a small cut with. So that worked out well. All right, we marked off exactly how far we need to go using the digital weigh scale uh, for the first three parts of the turning. So I'm going to turn it down to the largest diameter, and then the next largest, and the next largest. Uh, roughing it down, we're going to leave oh, 30, 40 thousandths, and then I'll let this sit for to overnight. And then tomorrow we'll come back in and do the finish cutting. Uh, that way any stresses uh, there might be hopefully will relieve and, and go through a little bit of a heating and cooling cycle. And, and uh, then we'll be able to do the finish cutting. So I put on a big WNMG. It's a 432. The one I use all the time for this. Take about 40 thousandths off and see how that goes. Feed rate of about 5 thousandths per rev. There is 634. No vibration so far. out up to the end of the gear point so this is the last section of the shaft I'm gonna flip it around
right, we're uh, all roughed in, and uh, we'll do that uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll get it. Well, it's been a couple days, and we're back on the shaft. Uh, it's all roughed, roughed in, within 20 thousandths roughly overall. Uh, and I trimmed it to length, to, so it's it's to length. And I, the only other thing I didn't, the only thing I really didn't show was then adjusting each one of those lengths to be just right. So we're well within a spec here. Uh, we're going to turn now. We've we've gone through and measured a few other things on the lathe and double checked our gear dimension. And 1.214 is what's supposed to be. So. Uh, we're going to cut that the gear space blank to that diameter right now. Uh, a little bit more. Well, we're, we're two thousandths large, so I'm just going to leave it there. We're going to do this next section where the spline is. We have 40,000 needs to come off. We'll call that good. Yeah, about a thousand taper. That's okay. That'll work. Yeah, about a thousand's big. 813. I'll leave it. Uh, we'll let this, it, it's getting a little bit of warmth in it. We'll let it let it cool, and if I have to uh, clean it up a little bit, uh, I can do that. Now, if you remember when I was roughing it, I was when I was down in this region, I was getting a little uh, harmonics and vibration every once in a while. And what I'm doing now is I have my uh, carriage lock set a little snugger, so. Uh, they're causing some uh, friction, so if the case there was any movement, and I'm not getting any now, so I think that's helping a lot, uh, especially in this far end down here. Close enough to 750, huh? I'm doing all these in a couple cuts because, of course, a light cut I get. I'm getting a really great finish, of course, and it's a finishing cut. But the first cut is really a calibration cut, and then the second one is the final cut.
Yeah, a thousandth over. I'd rather be over than under. Okay, so these all all these surfaces are done. This still needs to be done, and this still needs to be done. But I'm going to put some chamfers on the gear blank. 13 degree slope I'm going to put in here. Chamfer here. And I'm going to put in some radius uh, relief cuts in here, just like the other shaft. And a chamfer on the end. So I'm going to do all that now. And then we'll flip it. This is a top-notch type tool holder. So the tool... Uh, the insert is a uh, rides vertically like this. Now this one is a radius tool. The one that's in here is a threading one, 60 degree. These are kind of especially nice for uh, cutting larger threads. Very small rat tail file, slow speed. It's gonna clean up. I cannot get rid of that chatter. We're just gonna just clean up these little grooves a little bit. Now, if you haven't gone out to the driving range and got yourself a bucket of balls for handles, get some. This one, the, the hole's a little bit big, but it's just, it's an eighth inch hole, but it fits nice and loose, but it still protects me. And I'm doing it very slow, have very good control. Golf ball handles for files are wonderful, you guys. Good thing I don't golf. I think that's going to be just fine. It's just a relief. I'm not even, other than for a stress point relief. Uh, there's no other reason to have something in there. And I'm going to go in here with a DNMG insert tool. And, uh, and we're going to take that down about 30,000. So that's about it. And I'll do half of it. And, and then I'm going to figure out how to do the other half. <laughs> I'm going to use this grooving cool and, and just come here and take light cuts and run it over. We got the compound set over 13 and a half degrees and we're going to cut this uh, slight taper in there. Oops, I forgot to turn the camera on and the angle is cut. I 
All right, we got it flipped around, and we have a little copper spacer. I tell you, great copper little spacers or things like this for the jaws or anything to protect. Take a piece of copper pipe, whatever sizes you want, cut a little half inch section off of it, pound it flat, and it's a nice, uh, nice thick uh, spacer or protector for your jaws. Simple, fast, and actually uh, fairly cheap, especially if you've got some scrap copper pipe, you know, or tubing, uh, even copper tubing works. Rigid copper pipe is probably a little bit better, it's a little bit harder, uh, but it, it all works. Okay, this is the only end we need to cut down or right at 900, uh, which was my roughing dimension. I'm going to take it down to 875. Now all the finished cutting I've been doing at 715 RPM and about 8, 8 thousandths feed rate. It doesn't look as smooth but it, it's just, it's pretty much just as smooth. Uh, it's just a, it was a pretty light cut that second cut. 875.5 so I'm about a half thousandth, about a half thousandth large here. Um, 875 so about half a thousand taper. There's a we do have this this, this uh, plain bearing. We'll uh, we'll just see how it fits on there as it is. Okay, I slipped it on there. It's, it's a little bit on the snug side. Feels like it has ridges or something on the ends. Uh, it's probably the bearing. But yeah, me working it on there now. It goes on. There are some ridges on the end of the bearing. So. Uh, that actually is a beautiful fit. So we're just going to leave it. We'll do a little polish maybe on it and call her good. Yeah. That bearing has a little high spot in it there. Anyway, that's, that's really nice. So here's the setup. Uh, feed block clamped in there. Everything's flat on the plate. And this is how we measured this this one piece of junk same way and uh, this is a 24 inch uh, Starrett uh, height gauge I've shown in videos before and this is a 12 inch uh, Minotoil one both same accuracy wise uh, you know to a thousandth and for what we're doing it's just uh, beautiful And uh, we just go, we just, uh, you know, I just start off the bottom here, let's say, since we're here. And we just go down, the, go, go down, reading it. And we'll work our way up uh, with the original measurements we took. And we'll see where we end up here. So that should be, uh, we should be 3.9. Alright, 3.94. So we're four thousandth long there. Eight two seven. Eight eight two D I'd say that's right on the money, eight two seventy right there. Yep, eight two seventy. So that's right on the money. Thirty-eight. 
13, 7, 5, 75. So we're 13, 5, 75. Right on the money. So our links are really good. A couple thousands in a couple spots. So we, we like that. Now I'm going to uh, we'll check the diameters here. See how we did on those. So we'll start down here. So 875 was this one. And, and that's a 22 millimeters. Okay. There we go. Eight, so we're a half a thousandth under 8745. Yep. Few few tenths uh, difference, but eight seven four five, so half thousandth under. This was one two one four. We're still one and a half big. One two one five six, so we're still about one and a half large, which is fine. Next one was eight. This is a pretty non-critical dimension, but 863. As long as it's below the root diameter of the gear. And then we're a couple, well, we're about one, we're one and a half thousandths under on that one. This is 1050. Uh, one inch and fifty thousandths, I should say. Uh, and uh, I think we're a little this is a tiny over. We're one one inch fifty one one inch fifty one and a, a point four so one one point four thousandths large there that's where the spline is I bet it's better being large so when we fit the, when this after the spline is cut if we had to uh, polish that off a little bit we could eight twelve for the next one or now the spacer fits on here. I might have to just uh, do a little there. This is 813. So we'll one over. Here's the uh, spacer that goes on there. Yeah, it goes about halfway and then it gets snug. Yeah, we could uh, we could polish that a little bit. So we are one over uh, what we measured, so we'll we'll polish that a little bit. Next one is uh, three quarters, 750, where the bearing fits, and the bearing fits really nice right now. And we're right at 750, a couple tenths over. So that's that's nice, that's perfect there. And this was five eight six six twenty five, and. We're at 626.4. So, like I said, I'd rather be a little over if 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 if, if it's a, if that's a then then under putting it back on is a little hard. I'm gonna go over and polish that a little bit and get that uh, uh, spacer to fit. All right, it's through and laid. Just a uh, quick little polish on that, and that cleaned uh, just a. Just right up. That's this perfect fit on there. And it's just a spacer. The gears go on here. Then the bearing is here. Uh, now this needs a this has a grub screw. And we're not going to drill that hole. It's only a 200,000 deep hole. We're not going to drill that until after he puts it together. Uh, that way uh, any any slack or movement that this might be different than the other shaft that way we he can mark it and put it in the right spot then the uh, bearing slips on this end here so that came out just beautiful and a little bit of polish I did on that just to really make it really nice and nice nice super smooth finish we'll call that done for now uh, Kevin's gonna cut the gears and the splines. I think we got a we got a good blank. It's gonna hopefully uh, be a pretty nice shaft for him. Sure, look, it just looks real good. Yeah.
everywhere. All right, you guys, uh, we'll call that finished project for now. Uh, and we'll, hopefully maybe we'll see it when or get some photos back uh, when uh, he gets the gears cut and spine cut. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, just a little reminder for you guys uh, coming to the bash. I'm gonna. I'm working. I just got some stock in. I'm gonna work on making some scribes for the bash. Uh, I don't know if I'll have time to get some dovetail cutters, but I will have scribes. And if anybody wants a dovetail cutter, we we just uh, order order it up here, and uh, and I'll get you it made uh, after the bash. But I'm gonna try to get some scribes made for the bash. And uh, you know, the, just so you know, I mean that's how I support the channel is uh, building the product. Uh, and uh, I do appreciate everybody's uh, support uh, in the past here and this time I'll have some stainless scribes adding that to it and uh, the and brass scribe so get a scribe order up thanks you guys thanks for watching